Hey guys, so we just added authentication. So now when I create a team, it'll automatically send my JWT token to the server and then they know what user I am and then they can assign my user to the team that I just created. But we're not handling errors very well right now with this. So if I come over here to my application, I can see I have no tokens. So I should not be able to create a team. You know, hit submit. Sure enough, it says cannot read property SQL is undefined. So we do get an error of some kind, but we don't get, hey, you're not authenticated. Um, and that's really what we want to do is protect these basically routes um, and make sure no one's able to access these um, when they're not authenticated. Um, so here's how we're going to do it. The first thing is we're going to protect the actual GraphQL endpoint. And we're going to do this using a method I like to use um, that can be basically broadly used with any type of permission. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to go over how this works. And what this will let us do is do fine grain permissions on the resolver level. So what I'm going to be doing is ideally I'd like to say create team is authenticated route and uh, only uh, users that are logged in can create team. So if you're not logged in, you can't access this mutation. And so we want to be able to do this in a generic way where we can say any mutation. So we can select a handful of them that are need to be authenticated and some aren't. We want to be able to, an easy way to reuse code across these. So I like to do it in this way. So this is something I took from a repository I saw called GraphQL, or I think it's Apollo Errors actually, and I really liked it. So how it works is you create this thing called uh, create resolver. And what it is is a function that takes a resolver and creates another resolver. So here's an example. I can create a requires auth resolver. So when I call create resolver here, what I do is I pass it a um, resolver. So you'll notice here, this looks like my team resolver here. It has a parent args and then context here. So parent args context. And then here it's checking the context, the uh, user. So here what I could do is I could say um, user, I could just expand this if I wanted to. And if there's not a user or there's not a user ID, we know this is a bad user and we throw an error and we say not authenticated. So that's exactly what we want, right? We want to wrap our components over here. And what this will allow us to do is in our team over here, I can then say import requires, I think it's requires, yep, requires off from dot slash, actually we're up a repository permissions. And then here I can say requires auth.create resolver. And I wrap my whole resolver here in that. And oops. I just went down one too many. There we go. And the great thing about this um, is this can be have many children. So requires auth here is now going to be checked. So what's going to happen is this is going to run, and it doesn't like it because we only have one, but we'll add more later. Um, we only have one resolver here, right? Before. So this is going to be, this one resolver here is going to be run before our create team. So it's going to check, and if it doesn't have a user, then it's not authenticated. But what's nice is we don't have to limit this to one. I can say, requires auth dot create resolver and that's what you see in the example here is I actually have an admin so why don't I just copy this to show you guys so here what I'm doing is I'm saying requires auth dot create resolver and here I'm checking whether the user is an admin now you notice instead of calling create resolver here um, using this base 
I'm using requires dot auth. So what's going to happen is it's going to go through two things. It's first going to check whether the user is logged in. If not, it throws an authenticated error. Then it comes here to requires admin and checks whether the user is admin. Now we don't have an admin, so we don't have to use this, but this kind of shows you the power of this. Um, you can stack these. So now over here, instead of requires auth, I could say requires admin. And really that does two checks. So this is just a really nice way to do permissions that I found and I really like it. So we don't need this. And uh, kind of how this is how it's working right here. We are creating a, um, we're taking our resolver, which we're grabbing here. And we're saying, I want to be able to create, um, basically add a function to it called create resolver that takes a child resolver and then um, returns a new resolver. Now our new resolver is another resolver that first waits for the child resolver. Um, it first resolves itself, the base resolver, and then the child resolver, which sounds really confusing, but basically what this is doing is this child here is going to resolve before whatever um, it got created. So this guy is going to resolve before this guy because this is this is its child, if you will. I probably didn't explain this well. The gist of it is this runs before this, so we're checking whether they have an auth. But stuff like this is very confusing when you have um, functions inside of functions. And this is barking at me because I didn't export default, so let's export default. And I'm just going to do a little um, requires auth, add a little comment here so we know what that does. So now if I try to do this for say graphical, so I want to show you guys before and after. And this should have 80-80. So now if I try to do mutation and I try to do it from here, so I'm obviously not logged in. And let's just grab OK. It says not authenticated. So that's awesome. That's what we expect. And same thing goes over here. When I hit submit, we should get a not authenticated, and we do perfect. Um, not sure what this is. I'm going to refresh and see if we get that error again. We get the same one here. Um, looks like it happens when you do two errors in a row. But now on our front end, if we get this not authenticated error, we want to not even show that screen anymore, right? We want to move them to a different screen. So on submit here, what I'm going to do is do a try catch for this mutation. So I'm going to say const res or response is equal to null. And I'm going to make it a let variable. I'm going to say try, try doing this, catch any errors that we get. And now we only have really one error that we're going to get. Um, if you had other errors, what you could do is, oops, lagged for a second. If you have other errors, you can read the error object. But here we're just going to say this.props.history.push to the login page. So if anyone tries to do this and they're not logged in, we're just going to tell them to go to the login page. So here I'm not logged in. We can see um, and it tells me just go to the login. And on submit, and notice how I had the function run still. We need to return, and that way we don't get this error. So create team. So now I'm covered. If some kind of user tries to do this, um, they're going to get blocked. So I'm going to register a new user because I forgot my username from last time. .com. And now we're just going to log in and make sure the functionality still works.
So sure enough, we're able to create a team okay still. So we're not logged in. We get kicked out and sent to the login page. Um, otherwise, we're good. But ideally, we don't even want to show the user this page if they're not authenticated. So one way we can do is check. We know if they're not authenticated with these tokens. Now, someone could boo a fake token and trick us, but most users aren't going to put fake tokens. So what we can do is just check for whether they have a refresh token and a regular token. So JW2 decode is what we're going to use. This is a library that lets you um, take a token and just decode it. So we're going to get the contents of this token and we are going to use that to um, redirect users. So here is our uh, React router right here. And how this works is they have a little auth example and we're going to copy this. But we're going to do it slightly differently just because we have a JWT, JWT token we're going to look at. So we're going to create this thing called a private route. Um, and you use it the same as a regular route, but you notice you do this is authenticated check. So we're going to copy this and come over here. So real quick before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and install the library. So I'm on client, download, yarn add, jw2 decode. And then I'm going to come over here to my routes. And I'm just going to paste this guy in. So private route. And so we're using a route that we have up here. And we're taking the props. And we're saying if the user is authenticated, we'll show the component. Otherwise, we redirect them to the login page, which is perfect. And we don't care about any sending them any type of state. Um, this redirect component is coming from React Router DOM. And it just says, um, notice how we're rendering a redirect here. That is, what that does is it just redirects to the login page as you would expect. So private route, how this works is this create team. Instead of a route, it's gonna be a private route. And same thing, we pass the component create team. Notice this component here. We're gonna render it if the user is authenticated. Now instead of doing fake auth, what we're gonna do is say check off, or we can say is authenticated. So const is authenticated. And here we're gonna import our JWT. I'm gonna call it decode from JWT decode. And here I'm gonna say const token is equal to local storage dot get item token. And the same for the refresh token. And now I'm just gonna do a try catch. We're just gonna to try to decode the token. And we're gonna catch. If we get any errors, we're gonna return false. And we're gonna decode both the token and the refresh token. So what this is doing is it's just trying to decode the token. If it can't decode the token, the, de the token's either null or it's invalid or something. And so that user is not authenticated, we say. So we're gonna say return true otherwise. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm authenticated, you can see my tokens here. So I'm gonna try to malform one of these. So delete a character. Um, and then refresh. And it still works, so I obviously did not malform this correctly. So if you go to jwt.io, you can see what your token decodes to. Okay, so notice it still decodes this stuff. If I take stuff off the end here, nothing changes. I think that has to do with the secret. I think I have to take off some here. There we go. So notice how the uh, payload, it goes from having purple stuff and then I get rid of it and it changes, it dies. So it makes it invalid. 
So I'm going to come in here in the middle and delete one of the letters, see if that invalidates it. All right, sure enough, we have an invalid token now and we get redirected. Now, I'll also show you with a cleared out token, create team. Bam, took me right back to the login page. But if I were to log back in, and I already forgot my login, but I would be able to access the page. I really need to just write one of these logins down. <clears throat> I think, I think we can copy this. I think I use the same username and password. Yeah, that worked. All right, create team. We notice we're still able to access the page. So now we have this guarded on the front end. Um, so we're saving a request we have to make to the server, but we're also guarding on the back end in case someone is not accessing it through our website or if they get past the front end somehow. So we have this not authenticated also. So we're, our bases are covered now when creating teams and we're also, this is very easy to use every time we create new things. As we go, we create channels, we create other things, we can create new private routes, and we don't have to code this up again. And then also, our permissions here. As we get more permissions, um, we can use this resolver here and create new ones, making sure they're still authenticated and the errors will bubble up, which is really cool. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and the code for this will be up on GitHub.